Hello everyone, um, it's Matt from Akuma Mods. So today I'm going to be showing you guys uh, what you're going to need to install the nickel metal hydrate battery charging circuit. Now this is completely different uh, to a LiPo circuit that most of you guys have used. Um, I'll show you right here. Uh, this one is what you usually see on here and it's connected to a lithium poly lithium ion polymer battery. Um, I believe I said that correct. Uh, but basically, uh, the issue that I have with this is is a, a few actually. Uh, one, these batteries are prone to, I guess, shock, not, not having very good shock resistance. Uh, so let's say you happen to drop your case, something like that, uh, something happens where you shock the case. Um, the possibility of you damaging this is very, very good. They tend to balloon up and then they explode or they leak all over the place. I've actually had two customers have that happen to them. Um, whether or not they had dropped it or whatnot, I replaced them. They, they're completely under warranty um, because they had bought the kit as a whole from me. Uh, so this is a new kit that I came out with uh, for nickel metal hydrate batteries. That is uh, normal rechargeable batteries that you find uh, at the store, whether it be you know Target, Best Buy, Walmart, uh, Fry's Electronics, Micro Center, even IKEA. Uh, I prefer the IKEA Lada batteries. They're 20, 2450 milliamp ba uh, batteries, and uh, they're rated at 1.2 volts. Uh, so they're they're perfect for what we need uh, and it says standard charge is 245 milliamps for 16 hours so these do take a little while for them to charge uh, from dead uh, but they are nice batteries they're they're up there uh, several people have tested these and they're up there with the Eneloops uh, Eneloop Pro actually so if you're looking for good batteries Eneloop Pro, Lada, um, even EBL those are pretty good. Those are 2,800 batteries, 2,800 milliamp. So if you're looking for a little more beefier battery, I think that's about the beefiest you can find without sacrificing, you know, something on, on the end of, uh, you know, uh, the battery compositions and whatnot. So, but anyway, let's get to it. So when you get the kit, get the kit from me, uh, there's two versions of this. There's a version where it's just the board and some wiring, or in this case, we're going to be using a full kit that's the board, wiring, and three Lata IKEA batteries. Now, I will suggest that if you guys are getting this kit, go out and buy a nickel metal hydrate charging circuit. Get a smart circuit that tells you each and every cell uh, what it's at, because if you just get ones with lights, they're, they're okay. They charge all right. But um, you can charge them even faster. Like, this is kind of a slower charger. Uh, you can charge this while playing, but I don't really suggest it because it does take a little bit of time to do that because you're not charging at its full capacity. Anyway, let's get to it. So uh, I've already prepared everything, so uh, this is just more or less what you guys are going to need. You're going to need your pack of batteries, some solder, um, even some flux plate paste. Um, I use this from time to time. It's good stuff. It basically, you know, uh, encases the wire with, with solder. Uh, so it makes it easier to solder. Uh, so this is definitely for beginners. I highly suggest this if you're starting to get into soldering. Definitely. Um, also, I wanted to point out the wires that we are including here are silicone wires. Uh, so these are very, very flexible. They can be, like, crushed and, and whatnot, and they'll still work perfectly fine, and they're temp high temp resistant as well. So let's say you're sitting there and you're trying to solder something on, you're not gonna be melting the ends of the wire like you would on you know, the nickel metal hydrate batteries, um, which you gotta be careful with those on soldering them. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you'll need some solder, some paste if you want, and some wire strippers to strip the wire down. I do include a good amount of wire, so you will have to cut them down to size and get it all wired up. So, um, on here, we're basically going to state the same thing we did on the LiPo charging circuit. Remove your cartridge, remove your battery door. You're going to remove the six screws. That's one, two, three, four, 
five, and six in the battery compartment. Now we're going to move on to a unit that I've already broken down and I've wired up. So once you get that off, uh, you'll be able to pry the, uh, the unit apart. I don't suggest using a, um, a screwdriver, like a flathead screwdriver. I do suggest using something like for phones. It's called a pry tool. Uh, you should get these readily available anywhere. I might start including some of them uh, because it's, it is kind of hard for people to, to have that with them on the fly. So uh, it's a good possibility I'll start 3D printing those and putting them in there. We'll have to see how good they hold up. But anyway, once you get the case apart, you pull it, pull it apart. And uh, you will have to uh, leave this in inside the case and just remove the back end from it. Okay. Uh, there is a ribbon cable that is attached to the back ends here. Uh, you can detach either, either way. Or what you can even do is you can kind of slip it up like that and leave it attached, but you still need to get underneath here. So it's best to detach that. Be very careful with this little black tab connector that's up here, because as you can see, it can remove itself. So it's not the end of the world if that happens. It's an easy place it back in if you're okay. Um, but yeah, that can happen from time to time. So as you can see here, I've already got this wired up and it's basically the same setup as I have for the nickel metal hydrate. You can do this while it's all set in the case. I like to have these outside of the case because I have had some units where I um, accidentally put some uh, soldering iron resting on, on here and here, and basically I ruined the entire case. So, um, yeah, with that being said, you, you, it's probably best to remove the PCB from the, the, the entire unit. But it's not necessary if you can if you can get it on a good angle you know get it like this and like this and not try and rest it against the outside of the case you'll be in good hands so i that is one warning i do suggest uh keeping an eye on is is how you position your soldering iron so um just to do a, a quick comparison they are pretty much wired up in the exact same way we're just using different pads on the board um and really just one pad um, we're using differently than the uh, LiPo charger. So these are two different chargers. They do do two different things. So I uh, just wanted to let you know about that. All right. So what we're going to do, um, I usually hot snot it, as some people call it, uh, hot glue. Put it anywhere in here, up here, wherever, just as long as it's got an area that is not uh, hindering the case. So obviously you cannot put it anywhere within this battery area, even though there's a lot of places in here. Um, even if you decide to cut up your case and put it in there, I don't suggest it unless you put some Kapton tape over it because it does uh, use a little bit of heat when it is charging. Not much, but it, it, will, uh, it will heat up a bit. So anyway, uh, so we have our ground our VIN, that's voltage in, our battery plus, and our battery negative. That's it. Pretty self-explanatory for the most part. But again, we're going to go over this just in case you have no idea what you're doing. So our voltage in, I ran a wire, and I put it onto the pad on the upper left here. Okay, so let me, let me get something to point at. So there's two silver pads on the upper left here, one and then two. You're going to do the upper, upper left, okay? And solder directly into there, and that goes to your voltage in. Next one, we're going to do ground. Ground is pretty easy. You take a ground wire and you put it onto, this is going to be all copper plated, so you will have to use a little bit of solder to cover the ground plane on the, uh, the copper, because uh, if you don't know anything, the... Copper doesn't adhere very well to the solder, which this uh, flux paste will also come in handy because it'll allow it to basically uh, attack it in a way and get it all together. So that, that makes it a lot easier. But once you get it all set up, wire that into there, solder it, and you're good to go. The other thing we're going to go on to is the battery positive and the battery negative. Now, I kept these the same color wires because I wanted 
my power one wire and my ground another wire. So, and that's pretty much what we do on here. Um, usually I use yellow for power and then blue for ground. Um, those colors might change or they might have different colors. You can do what you want. It doesn't matter if you switch up the wiring. I just particularly like to have that so I know, okay, this is all voltage uh, that's being regulated and everything. And then this is my ground plane. So it's just easier to, to realize something if something happens to go wrong. So what we did is we took our battery positive, ran a wire down. Again, it doesn't have to look exactly like this as long as it comes to this side post here. Again, you might have to use a little bit of the flux to get in there. Go ahead and put it on there and then wire it up. Okay, that one's good. And then the opposite side with the negative. So this post is negative, this post is positive. As it shows right on the board here, here's the positive side. And on here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the negative side. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much how it sets up. This is an older board. Yes, this is, uh, I believe, a version 6. Uh, they do have version 11, so there is a little bit of changes here, but nothing major that anybody has to worry about when doing this project. Uh, it's the straightforward with every single board revision that they've done up to 11. From here on out, I'm not 100% sure, but up until version 11, um, that's when I know they'll, they're still good. So an easy way to tell which version board you have is if you open up your case and you look over by the negative terminal, right below it, it will say V11D. So this is the 11th revision on this board, and this is Rev D, I believe. Um, or that might be just what they call their development. I'm not sure. But that's pretty much it. Once you're all wired up, you're good to go. You can go ahead and replace everything back together. Replace or place back everything back together. And what's nice about this is not only will you be able to use your barrel jack, you will also be able to use your micro USB. The same goes for the nickel metal hydrate uh, charging circuit. You will be able to use the micro USB as well. So that's something I found out a little bit later. But um, one thing that is definitely different between the nickel metal hydrate and the, um, the, the LiPo battery, I'm sorry, um, the charging circuits do have different types of LEDs. So on this, when you plug it in, it is red. And then once it's done, it's green. Unfortunately, with this board, it does not tell you when it is green and it's done. Once it's done, it is off. So there is no LED whatsoever. It's either red or nothing. So if there's no LED on there, that means something's wrong. It's not contacting the, uh, uh, the contacts or, um, you know, the, the battery's done charging or there's something wrong with the charger itself. So if you do not see a light, um, that's a good possibility that it's one of those three things. But usually, if you install this correctly, you'll be good enough. So again, we're going to go ahead and plug this in really quick. Let me get some batteries in here. So we're going to put in our batteries. Okay. And hopefully you guys will be able to see this. But once you plug it in, you'll see a little red light. Not sure if you guys will be able to see that or not. Let's see if I can get this on camera. So there you go. There's a little red light right there. And like I said, once it's charging, that's when that red light is going to be on and it's going to tell you, hey, uh, we're going to be charging your battery. And then once it's done, it's going to be completely turned off. So um, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, it's pretty simple modification. Uh, what's nice about this is you don't have to cut up your battery uh, door area. Uh, it'll remain the same type of area like this. And uh, the other nice thing is you will never ever have to remove those AA batteries unless something goes bad. One of them's not charging properly. And you could always check them with a voltmeter if you're not sure about them charging correctly uh, down the line. But you'll usually notice if you're going to be doing some gameplay and you're like, hey, I've only gotten an hour out of these batteries. Uh, I think they're uh, the end of their cycle, which... It's usually pretty long away so uh, these batteries are much 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 
safer than lipo batteries um and that's one of the biggest things that i wanted to stray away from also the fact that i wanted an all-in-one type of thing so i wanted the ability to have your rechargeable batteries keep them in here you don't ever have to take them out you can take them out if you want it's no problem um now another thing i know in addition to this is people were asking me about well what if i put in regular double a batteries while i don't suggest using regular double a batteries on here it's not going to do anything as long as it's plugged as long as it is not plugged in once you plug it in you will end up frying those batteries and you will possibly blow up the circuit i'm not really sure i'm not even going to test that because i don't want to see what happens i don't want to be blowing up another board like i did to this one um so uh, if you are in a pinch in a bind and you have to use regular AA batteries, just remember to take them out. Don't charge them, because if you do, you will probably end up destroying them in some way, shape, or form. And you might possibly destroy something on your case. So, um, yes, I can put a power switch in here somewhere, um, but the problem that I'm having right now is finding a, a miniature latching power button that can fit somewhere inside here. So um, that's my biggest concern right now is trying to find something that will fit nicely in here and that uh, is not going to hinder too much of cutting the case again. So um, that's really the, the most difficult thing that I'm trying to find is, is something that, that doesn't require a lot of modification to do if that were happened to be um, the issue that starts to arise. Uh, because I really don't want to have anything exterior. I'd rather have everything interior if possible. Um, so that's that's just me. But again, you should be okay to use regular AA batteries in here if you need to. This unit does have a nickel metal hydrate charging circuit. It actually has the first generation of it. Uh, so these are the first two units uh, with nickel metal hydrate charging circuits inside of them. The only ones currently in the world that I am aware of uh, because these boards were just around uh, not even two weeks now. So um, so that's the first they're being around and uh, yeah, so they're, they're still very, very new. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, you can uh, ask me below. Or, uh, you know, you can find me on the Retro Flag GPI case user group, on Twitter, on Reddit, um, Instagram. You can find me pretty much anywhere that there is social media uh, around. I will probably be there in some way, shape, or form. I'm not going to say that I, I will be there to answer your question right away, but 99% of the time I'm around at some point in the day. Uh, to answer people's questions. So um, if you liked it, the video, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so we can get some more videos like this out. Uh, I will be having more videos of this coming out. Uh, some of you guys have seen me working on a replacement D-pad. Uh, this is going to be based off of the current GPI D-pad. And uh, it's going to fit a lot better than this one does. We're not going to have this, all this mush around here so uh and there are, is some other stuff that's coming up so uh please stay tuned and you know like i said subscribe because you don't want to miss out on what's coming up on the g pie case until then happy modding and happy gaming guys have a good one